afternoon. Thank you all for coming. Um, we've got a lot to discuss uh, this afternoon, so I won't take up too much time with long introductions or anything else. So we'll go straight to the panellists and, and get them to introduce themselves. Uh, so first we'll go to Joseph on the left, and we'll work our way across. Um, we've got three minutes each to uh, make your case. Hi, my name is Joseph Paul. Um, I research agriculture and the environment at the University of Oxford. Um, last year we published research using data on tens of thousands of farmers around the world and identified ways to reduce food's environmental impacts through changes in production and changes in food consumption. Um, there are many results in the paper, um, but one in particular was staggering. Um, Meat and dairy are some of the most environmentally damaging foods by quite a large margin. Animal products use 80% of the world's farmland and create 60% of food's different emissions, despite providing just 37% of our protein and about 20% of our calories. So a huge imbalance. 100 grams of protein from beef uses 2,000% more land and creates 3,500% more emissions and the same amount of protein from beans, peas, nuts, and tofu. Um, so we looked at what would happen if the world went vegan in our paper, but today I'm just going to give the results for the UK, and what would happen if the UK went vegan, or what would happen if anyone in this room changed from a meat-based diet to a plant-based diet. Firstly, the UK's land use would fall by 70%, or 26 million hectares which is actually an area of land the size of the UK itself. Why, why is that? It's because we import about 16 million hectares of land from other countries. Um, so obviously imagine the nature uh, uh, that could be restored if we didn't eat meat and dairy. We could bring back the forests and wildlands of the past um, that were full of, of life. Um, obviously an alternative use of this land could be to make the UK more self-sufficient in food. Um, secondly, the UK's greenhouse gas emissions would fall by a quarter, um, and our estimate is the biggest climate benefit of diet change reported in the peer-reviewed scientific literature. Um, this is because we assess the full food supply chain, everything from the clearing of land in Brazil and Indonesia for UK food, right through to processing and packaging. But more importantly, in our greenhouse gas emission reduction number, we included the benefits of carbon being removed from the atmosphere by trees, regrowing on all that land, about 70%, about 26 million hectares uh, of land that would be spared. Um, so, significant greenhouse gas benefit. Thirdly, water quality would improve as fresh water and marine eutrophication falls by about 50%. Um, this is a serious benefit because today many of the UK's rivers and seas suffer from nutrient pollution, which increases microbial activity which uses up oxygen and suffocates complex life like fish. Um, additionally, because the pressure to produce so much land from a limited amount, limited area would, would be reduced, going vegan basically creates an option space to bring in policy to eliminate dangerous synthetic pesticide use without compromising food supply. And in the last few weeks, I've had personal first-hand experience with the effects of permethrin, cypermethrin, acipermethrin, and glyphosate when they, were, when they were applied near where I was working. And, um, and these and thousands of other legal pesticides are liberally applied worldwide in unbelievably potent cocktails, which indiscriminately wipe out swathes of life, particularly insects. So put simply, Vegan diets free up land, creating opportunities for rewilding, food self-sufficiency, less pesticide-intensive farming. Vegan diets, diets drastically cut greenhouse gas and other emissions. And for the typical person, going vegan is probably the single biggest way to reduce your environmental impact, not just on greenhouse gas emissions, but probably almost every other important environmental issue.